A person with TBI will commonly exhibit cognitive deficits, such as a loss of many higher-level mental skills. Most common among these impairments is memory loss. Specific memories from one's past may be lost, and difficulties with storing new memories are also common. People with cognitive impairments may become easily confused or distracted and may have problems with concentration and attention. Frequently, there's a lot of long-standing deficits in the areas of attention and concentration. Um, you know, sometimes folks will come back and tell me that they have a lot of noise that they just kind of can't cancel out in their brain. Um, memory is another deficit that can be long-standing. I went out and cleared off the car, and I, I cleared it good. Basically, I cleared all the snow off the top, I got the windows, scraped the eyes, the whole thing. I mean, I had it looking pretty. Honey, could you do me a favor? Could you clean up the car for me? <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've already done that. You did? I go out and look. Car, there the car sits, totally buried in snow. Across the street, my neighbor's car is just immaculate. Now, I went out and cleared the wrong damn car. Another important disability to be aware of in regards to a person with TBI is the long-term behavioral and emotional effect on the person. Behavioral and personality changes are common and will often occur unexpectedly. This is mainly due to damage to the frontal lobes of the brain. People with TBI are commonly known to display personality traits that are uncharacteristic of traits to which family members and friends have become accustomed. Such an extreme change in personality and behavior is something with which family members can have great difficulty coping. It is often easier to accept the physical and cognitive effect of TBI than the effects on personality. I, I'm not social. I used to be a social person. I'm not social now. And it's more because I don't know how to act around a large group of people. So if there's like more than three people, I don't really know how I'm supposed to behave in front of people, even my friends and stuff. I don't do so well in crowds. And if something really sad happens, like a relative died a few months ago, I haven't cried in two and a half years. Since my injury, I can't cry. Like It's like someone took a guitar and an amplifier and cut the cable that makes the sound come out. I can't attach emotion for crying at all. Before his injury, my father was very stoic and not um, very emotional and now he tends to open up a little bit more which is not a bad thing but it's different you know it's not the same person I grew up with and there are moments where if he's um, you know overwhelmed or you know too hot because the weather's too hot or he's hungry and something bothers him he definitely is much uh, has a much shorter fuse and unfortunately whoever is the person who's there is the one who gets the brunt of the shorter fuse. If you knew my dad prior, very gentle soul, very mild, quiet individual um, and the first time I saw um, maybe a, about a year after the accident and um, he was gonna go get his car and leave and you know, he had this fixation about that. And they tried to stop him and he just had a fit and they could not calm him down. They had to call security in, from the facility um, to try and talk some sense to him. They tried to get us on the phone to talk to him and he just, it wasn't working. I had to come up, you know, go there. And for the first time in my life to see my dad on the floor, like having a fit, like a two-year-old. I think we're all still grieving. I think that will. Rick was, as he said, very patient, was one of the kindest, most thoughtful people I've ever known. If there was someone was sick or death in the family or something, Rick was always there. And to this day, he still is with his friends and family. But he's not the same person that he was and that is a huge loss to all of us. I told my wife, my then wife, the guy you married is dead. You know, this is the guy I am and uh, then it sort of dawned on me, I really had, the, the guy who was there is now dead and this is who you have. 
Certain attitudes and actions that are generally considered only appropriate among children or teenagers will often become apparent in adults with TBI. The person with TBI is prone to display outbursts of extreme rage. A normally mild-mannered, even-tempered person may suddenly act angrily and rudely for no good reason. It's important that you are sensitive to the fact that these types of outbursts are often the result of the injury and not necessarily an indicator that the person is acting intentionally belligerent or hostile toward you. I get extremely agitated and frustrated really easily. It's like hitting a light switch, suddenly it's there. I never feel it building up that I'm getting annoyed. It's just suddenly I'm annoyed and I'm ready to pull my top. And it doesn't matter how minor the thing is or how major. It's like you left you know, a paper towel on the table. How come we didn't throw this out and instantly I'm already there? So it affects me day to day because I tend to blow a gasket for no reason at all. Uh, my son, uh, when he was in the back seat of the car and uh, just pulled in to the post office and, and I got out of the car and then he was doing something and, and was just pissed me off. And at that point he was in the car and I slammed the back door so hard that the airbag deployed. In that moment it's just like the, the world flashed red. The only things in that world were that face in the window and me getting there. And oh, I was going to go to, I, I, I was coming fast. We've just learned to, you know, let him calm down, not to take these outbursts personally. Unfortunately, my mother gets the brunt of it, but we try to remind her, don't take it personally, leave the room, don't say anything, because arguing with him, you're not going to win, and that just makes matters worse. My daughter once told me it when she was seven, you know, Dad, you've got a time out, go sit on the step. And that was, you know, sort of one of those epiphanies where you, you hear that from a kid, you go, okay, I better go back off a little bit here. Impulsivity is another common behavioral attribute associated with TBI. People with TBI will often act on certain behaviors before having thought through these behaviors. Such behaviors tend to be considered embarrassing, disturbing, or annoying, and break the rules of proper conduct. As with displays of extreme rage, these impulsive behaviors tend to contrast with the injured person's personality prior to injury. Oftentimes we'll see individuals after a TBI acting out. We'll see behavioral problems. Um, we'll see people striking out. We'll see people yelling out. And frequently what this is, is it's a manifestation of the confusion. Disinhibition is characterized by unrestrained behavior or a disregard of cultural restraints. A person with TBI will frequently exhibit a loss of inhibition as a result of their injury. For example, sexual emotions can become unrestrained which can impact very negatively on one's marriage and home life. Normally, the brain will filter certain emotions. However, a person with TBI will often express these emotions unfiltered. If possible, whenever working with a person with TBI, it is best to have a family member or caregiver present. The family member can be an articulate advocate for the patient so that if for some reason EMTs have to be called, the family members can, can let the initial, the first responders know right away that this person's had a brain injury. That maybe as a result of that they're more impulsive, maybe they're more concrete. They won't understand humor if you're trying to joke with them to lighten the situation up or something like that, or to let them know that you know they're, they're always off balance like this. And this is slurred speech is not because they just drank and that's not the reason that they're so lethargic. You know, the, this is the way they are at baseline. It is very important to understand that when working with a patient with TBI, the various symptoms associated with a person's injury should not be misinterpreted. Because a person may be slurring words, having difficulty communicating, or is demonstrating a loss of balance, it does not mean this person is intoxicated or on drugs. Because a person is exhibiting rage or odd impulsive behavior, it does not mean this person is crazy, rude, or deliberately being difficult. Sometimes, a little extra time, attention, and patience can go a long way while managing a person with TBI. Talk very much to that person. I know it can be in a catastrophic situation, but talk to that person, don't talk around that person. Make sure you 
helping them get up to speed in terms of what's going on. Because uh, patients with brain injury, people living with brain injury, can be more concrete, it's harder for them to be abstract about things, uh, you may need to ask questions or talk to them about something in a way that's really very concrete. Ask specific or simpler questions. If it's clear to you that the person is more sophisticated than that, progress from there. But if this is a person who has significant impairments from a brain injury, ask simple and concrete questions. Not a compound sentence, but things that are yes or no or require short answers and the questions are very direct. Just be patient with them. When you ask a question, really wait and hear the question, um, the answer. I, I know we have a tendency of like asking a question but not waiting for the answer and just moving on. I think the most important thing to remember after someone's had a traumatic brain injury is that they're still a person. And while they may not fully be the same person that they used to be, a lot of their behaviors are things that they cannot volitionally control. They don't have control over them. So while it may be hard when you know you're you're being called names or you're being you know struck out at, I think it's important to remember that this person can't help those behaviors. They can't manage those behaviors. It really helps us as professionals see things in a different light.